Well, hi, Miss Hamilton. My name is Kara Spross. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good. I'm a mass communication sophomore here at Xavier, and I'm here on behalf of the Xavier Library just to get a better insight on the new exhibit the museum has and just a better idea of what Afrofuturism really is. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll start by introducing myself a little bit. Um, my name is Gia Hamilton. Um, I'm a native of New Orleans, and I live in Tremaine Lafitte, and I work at the New Orleans African American Museum in historic Tremaine. Um, and I took over this role in 2019 um, with the hopes of reopening the New Orleans African American Museum. So we were closed for seven years, and my job as executive director and chief curator was really to reopen the museum and breathe new life into it. So um, I'll back up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I also have the chief curator in my title. So I have a curatorial practice um, that I've now engaged in for about 15 years. And um, it, it's centered around two basic ideas, um, notions around Afrofuturism, which I'm sure I'll get into later, mm -hmm. and also this idea of social practice or how artists engage community, right? Um, not just with their work, but also with creating environments and creating worlds. So I like to say I build out worlds as a curator um, and that's a part of what I do. Okay, well, I know you're a sci-fi fan. So I know most of our viewers are probably just gonna know futurism and films like Black Panther and Wakanda Forever, but what would you, how would you define Afrofuturism for someone who's like completely new uh -huh. to the subject? Well, first, I just I want to say I think those are such good reference points, and it, it sort of feels like um, a really pivotal moment to have seen and um, Black Panther and Wakanda Forever, right? Like this is about what I think our Afrofuturist ideas being brought to popular culture. So I think for those of us who've you know been excited about these notions for a long time, it's been fun to see them play out on the big screen um, mm -hmm. with with building out an actual world that we could live in with beautiful costumes and jewelry. I know I know the jewelry designer, a shout out to Dorian Fletcher. Um, and just, again, giving us visual communication for something that may be in our hearts or our headspace, but that we haven't really been able to um, fully see come together in a world. Um, I started off mm -hmm. in probably I'm, I'm, a, I'm 70s born, 80s kid. And I started off in New Orleans as like a young punk kid who was really interested in um, just sort of anything alternative um, and alternative visuals of, of like what it meant to be a black person. And um, that meant things like hanging out on Frenchman Street before it was commercial and before it was cool. Um, it was really run by artists specifically. So it was all of the sort of poets and the writers and the fashion designers and the visual artists and the musicians of that time in the 90s that really wanted to like engage in grunge and rock and um, and hip hop and um, acid jazz, right? And so there's, you know, all of these things sort of coming together. And for me, I found my tribe there, but I didn't quite find that tribe until I moved to New York and started seeing like a broader sense of artists, writers, thinkers like Greg Tate, Jessica Care Moore, Imani Azuri, who were doing things at Joe's Pub that were kind of defining what Afrofuturism was, right? And then I started to read and 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 have more information about like um, that this was actually kind of becoming a scholarly or academic like, lens or focus that I could go into. So I'll start by saying like I am a big sci-fi person. My my sci-fi introduction is through Black feminist writing, um, specifically Octavia Butler. And so I'm so happy that she is starting to get her um, her acclaim now, right, to, to fame and for a lot of a, a lot of the work that she's done. And, you know, some of her notions have to do with these spaces where Black folk um, go through these dystopic futures in order to get to something on the other side. And I think that um, there's a lot of work written about her now. But for me, um, a little black girl feeling isolated oftentimes from popular culture, popular media, I could relate a lot to many of her characters. And so when I started embedding that into a curatorial practice, um, it really was looking for artists 
you know, visual artists, again, um, performance-based artists, musicians, poets, et cetera, who were all feeling this feeling of, of Blackness that we were wandering and kind of looking for tribe, looking for a way to come together. So I then fast forward and crystallize that with a film like Black Panther, where it's like you got an entire country where people, right, have not experienced um, oppression and, and colonization. And that's just, that's an incredible, like, compelling um, idea for us to grapple with. What would, what would life be like for us had we not experienced the transatlantic slave trade, colonialism, and oppression in the way that we have, and violence in the way that we have? Okay, that was, I'm sorry, I, that was a different perspective for me. I've never um, heard it from that perspective before. But I want to know kind of what was, I don't want to say what was the goal, but kind of what was the goal and what was like the impact that you wanted this to have on New Orleans, but not only New Orleans, but people outside of New Orleans as well? I think that's a good, that's a really good question. So I, I mentioned like my curatorial practice is always engaged in this, but maybe in informal ways. It wasn't really explicitly until 2015 uh, being back in New Orleans. Um, so, so coming back and living and working and seeing that um, there were all of these ways that Black artists were working in the city, but that there weren't um, a ton of resources and platforms for specifically contemporary artists to really get together and share ideas, talk through um, ways in which artists and creatives could work together. And so um, I helped to form the Afrofuture Society in 2015, which is really, a, a, it's a movement of of creatives who are interested in sharing resources, creating opportunities and experiences together, right? So it's, it's that simple. Um, and in 2018, um, I'd been doing this work in a couple of ways and we um, created an exhibition called Welcome to the Afro Future. Mm -hmm. um, exhibition took place during Miami Art Week. So in December, around this time of Art Basel and other art fairs in Miami, but we were located in the historically black neighborhood of Overtown. And um, our developers that we were working with were black developers who had a parcel of land that was 55,000 square feet. And they asked that we build out a world essentially, and that we help those neighbors and the people there in that neighborhood see their neighborhood in a different light. So for me, that was the beginning of this exhibition that this year will be in its fourth iteration. And so in Miami, we were interested in like notions of the global South. So how do we think about the South um, and in, in ways that are like specific to um, North America, right? The South in the United States. How do we think about the South as below the equator? So bringing in artists from South Africa, bringing in artists from Brazil, artists from um, from Central America, Afro di diasporic artists um, that are all communicating something very specific or in conversation with each other. So then when we get back to New Orleans and I helped to reopen the New Orleans African American Museum the next year, we brought this exhibition to the museum as our annual jury show. So we wanted to give like emerging artists um, an opportunity mm -hmm to think about how they could be a part of a conversation in a museum. So a lot of our artists that are a part of the show have never participated in museum shows or they're newer in their career. Um, and they're usually in conversation with artists who are more seasoned um, artists work that we've commissioned. So we like this idea and this play of um, artists at different seasons and different, different um, yeah, seasons in their career, in their lives, mm -hmm. because we think that, that that's a great dynamic conversation between the two. So when we came back to New Orleans, the, the Welcome to the Afro Future iteration, the second iteration was ground zero. And that's what I'm most excited to talk to you about today, because that kind of like lays the groundwork for a lot of the things that we talk about at the African American Museum that um, engage us in like our contemporary lens, like what we want to bring to the table, um, which is want to be a bridge um, between historical shows and the history of this uh, incredible city that we love and the contemporary where we are now and we want to push the envelope a little bit around where um blackness is headed right what those notions of future really mean 
Okay. So the fourth iteration, I just need like you to confirm like the name of it. Cause I know you said the last one was the matrix of creativity, but what's like the official name for this one? Yes. And the matrix of creativity, we actually, we brought in a guest curator, Christina K. Robinson for that. Um, I've been the curator for the other iterations and I'll continue to be the curator for this next iteration. So the, the working title um, is welcome to the Afro feature, liminal space, the place between now, then, and the forever future. So the idea that I'm working around this is um, in, in each aspect, I think of a Black aesthetic or a Black vernacular, we, um, we find that the, the blue note or the, the beat dropping or the space between um, a musical note and the beat dropping, that space is where we Black folks improvise is where we find creativity and freedom and create and free expression. Um, and it's something that feels like a really shared aesthetic among among black folks, mm -hmm. right? Wherever you go, which is like an example would be you could be in Trinidad or you could be in parts of Dakar or South Africa. And if a sort of Afro beat comes on where there's tension and then the beat drops everybody is going to fall and hang on that beat. And it's that space in between that like binds us and that brings us together. And so what we want to explore in this next iteration is what is that liminal space? What does it look like? What does it feel like? How do we make that concrete? And how do we offer more of that space so that we can insert um, creativity and, and, and have the freedom to, to express our Blackness? Okay, I love that title, by the way. That's that's very intellectual. Um, I'm trying to see if you could describe the new exhibit in like one word. What would that word be? Hmm. Oh goodness, that's such a good question. Or three words, but like just a brief couple words. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a little bit a little bit more space. I was like, man, one word is going to be hard. I would say it's the relationship between personal development and collective visioning and accountability. Okay, visioning and accountability. So, okay. so this idea that like we all have personal development to do, we all personally want to be free and liberated and joyful and healthy, right? Mm -hmm. Our personal development adds to the collective accountability and to the collective vision of what it means for us to be free. Right. So there's a relationship between those two things. And I think we're going to play with that a little bit in a bunch of different ways. OK, well, I don't want to give away too much, but I wanted to ask you what would be your like highlight of this iteration or like a must see or just something that stands out to you? That's right. So right now at the New Orleans African-American Museum, um, we're open Thursday through Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we actually have a free Saturdays every third Saturday of the month. So this Saturday, February 18th, is actually our free day. Um, so we encourage people to come out. What you're going to find at the museum right now is um, the very first um, immersive public curatorial studio. So what we're basically bringing people into is the fact that um, the curatorial studio is an opportunity for people to have an intimate look at what my curatorial practice is like, what our curatorial mm -hmm. Amaya Cooper's practice is like, and shout out to Amaya, uh, Xavier, Xavier students, right? Um, and so this is the first time really that museums are, um, that, that we as a museum are saying, listen, we want this to be a call and response process. So I'm not just going to go off into my office or into my studio alone. Mm -hmm. I actually want to interact with the public around these notions. And so there's an opportunity for people to see what I'm reading, right? to listen to the things, the sounds, the music that I'm listening to. We have a curated um, film that we put up and we rotate those films out. It's what we, the curatorial team are thinking about. And then the general public, you get to come and be in the studio with us and you actually get to interact. You get to have a manifestation journal, you get to respond to the collective vision board and you get to give us feedback on like what's important to you about certain aspects of Afrofuturism. So this is like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of groundbreaking because this is the first time that this kind of curatorial studio has made its way into a public realm. And um, we want 
as many students and community members to come in before we mount an exhibition and give us feedback on on this. So this is it's it's fun, it's exciting, and there's there are things that you can do and touch and be a part of when you're here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I heard you mention the Saturdays at the museum. Is there a way our business majors or just our student entrepreneurs can get involved through today? I'm Correct. so glad to ask that question. Um, <laughs> so we're firm believers in the fact that specifically with our HBCUs that we want students to get real life experiences of institution building and um, so we have fellowship programs and our fellowships are usually semester long gives you the opportunity to lend your particular expertise. So maybe you're a fantastic administrator or a communications person, and you get to come and help build the museum so that it reflects something that you have helped to design in the future. Um, and so, yeah, our business majors in, in particular, we're looking for operations fellows. We have fund development fellows. Um, we have folks that are in our archival team. Our programmatic team is looking for a fellow. So folks that are really great with public programs or love theater and performance-based work. Um, we have a fantastic new um, creative producer um, that they can work with. And so essentially you work really closely with the head of the department and you obviously help support our work, but you also build out a project that is personal to you. So you leave the fellowship with a portfolio item, right? Something that you design thought through. So I think, um, and it's paid. Um, so it's like you get a stipend for the semester. We've worked it out in the past where you've also been able to get credit. So if we work with a professor mm -hmm. and offer credit. Um, so I think it's a really fantastic way for our younger generation to see a pipeline from school directly to an institution and to feel like you can stay within Black institutions and still get a lot of really great professional experience. And I'll say, and I'll share with you all that um, one or two of our fellows have actually been hired, you know, um, in, um, by the museum. So there are, I think, a lot of growth opportunities for the right person. Um, if people are interested, they can send in a cover letter and their CV and like sort of the areas that they're interested in to jobs at noaam.org. Okay. So again, we're, we're currently looking for a programs fellow and we're also for a curatorial fellow and some other and some other fellowships that you'll be able to see really soon on our website. But um, if you go to jobs at, at noam.org, um, you know, you can always submit things and tell us what you're interested in and we'll engage for sure. Okay, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, um, well, thank you for sitting with me today. What was that? I'm sorry. I love I love these questions. That's been they've they've been fantastic questions. I you know, um, in mm -hmm. I, I love being able to share like my own viewpoints on this. Um, have you been Have you been to the curatorial studio yet? No, I was just gonna say it sounds like something I would want to go to as well. That was my next point. That's right. So, so listen, like if you're if you're going to parades on Saturday, come by, stop by, you know, um, usually we have a bar and a DJ so you can come and like have a drink, see the exhibitions that are up and come to the curatorial studio and then go off and parade and enjoy. Okay. And just before we end, this is open until June 4th of this year, if I'm correct. So the curatorial studio is actually ongoing and it's going to be oh, up. So you have a chance to see it. Um, we've got First Frame, um, which is, is curated by the collective Seeing Black on view until June 4th. And so we hope that we get as many people in as possible to see that exhibition before it, it closes. Um, we also have Double Dutch, which is a photographic exhibition that's from our permanent collection. And then we have a really beautiful budding um, sculpture garden that has murals and other objects in our historic um, campus. So you can kind of come, hang out, mm -hmm place to like read, do homework, bring your laptop, like see an exhibition, but then there are lots of little places to come and chill. So we we see it as like, we want it to feel like an extension um, of a hub on campus for our students. Okay. Well, I appreciate you talking with me today. I can't wait to visit the museum and the curator studio both. I hope you have a good Black History Month, a safe Mardi Gras. And my name is Karis, by the way, just one more time. And just thank you for everyone who's listening and the library thanks you as well.
Thank you all so much. And we we look forward to partnering more with Xavier. We have wonderful students. So shout out to Amaya Cooper again for her amazing work and contribution here at the New Orleans African American Museum. I'm Gia Hamilton. I'm the executive director and chief curator. And we look forward to connecting to you. So come on by the house.